Oh, no, bollocks, start again. This conceptual artwork comprises 10 paintings of 5 inch by 4 inch transparencies scaled up to 5 foot by 4 foot paintings. The idea originally was born to some extent out of the work of Simon Link and he would take a printed advert for say an exhibition or an art show and paint it, literally paint it onto canvas and the canvas would then itself become a work of art, a work of conceptual art in its own right. And I thought well why can't my photographs be used as subject matter for a series of paintings. I wasn't painting from the promotional material or the catalogues, I was painting the actual transparencies, which is why the edges have the notches and the serial numbers, but some of them have got Kodak written on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they are paintings of transparencies, not paintings uh, of the art. Yeah, I mean, as a concept, it's, 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 it's very subtle, but they are paintings of a transparency. The installations themselves that the photographs are of were quite ephemeral. None of the things exist in that form anymore. The only way they exist... As far as we know. As far as we know. Mm -hmm. So the only way those things exist uh, is through your photography and my painting. We know the shark has been replaced. Yeah. Several times. Several times. But the Anish Kapoor will clearly have been dug up and resurfaced. Within a, days of the show yeah, finishing. because it's a hole dug in the floor of a gallery in Spain. Yeah. And the Daniel Beren Daniel timber would have been yeah. used for something different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the only one that we know for sure will still exist is the Barnett Newman painting. Yeah. The um, two Peter Joseph paintings oh, will still Joseph exist, paintings. but yeah. not hanging on that wall. A lot of them are better known now than they were then. Yeah, um, yeah. Certainly, Anish Kapoor. Yes. Is a household name. Yes. Um, and obviously, Damien Hirst. Yeah. And Jake and Dinos Chapman. Yeah. You couldn't say we're forging anything because the paintings are not copies of any work of art. The paintings are paintings of transparencies, of installations, of works set up in galleries. So we're not stealing anything from anyone. In fact. You know, we're publicising their work even more, aren't we? Yeah, preserving yeah. a moment in time. Yeah. I think it's important that we're, we're preserving moments in time. It's never been clear who owns the copyright to the photos, because I, I took all the photos, but I have never, ever worried myself about copyright from my point of view, because I just didn't care. I just wanted mm. to get paid for the job and get out of there. That was my, you know, pay me the money, you do what you want. I mean, every about once every 15 years, I get an email from somebody publishing a book saying, can we have your permission to use your photograph of such and so-and-so's paintings? Which is in itself is an interesting point because... Well, that proves... They're that, asking me if yeah, they can use my photo. That proves they're your painting. photographs. So it's the... Yeah. yeah. So the, the, photograph, fact that, the photograph carries its own copyright. Yeah. But pretty well, every single thing, every single one of those images... Uh, there's an element of you in them, in that you chose the angle to photograph yeah, them from, yeah. you organised the lighting the way you thought yeah. would work better. Uh, so, um, <coughs> we were saying, so if your photograph is all there is left of an Anish Kapoor hole in the floor, uh, is, your work, is your photograph a work of art? Um, but then if I paint that photograph, is my painting a work of art? Uh, and who's the artist. Yeah. In a sense, the philosophy was asking questions. One thing it's definitely not is photorealism. The, we made a decision right at the beginning that these would be painted in a painterly way. That's an interesting yeah. point, that these paintings are your interpretation of my photographs, mm. which in themselves are interpretation of the original installations. I think we are interested in the idea of getting some sort of reaction. Yeah, some sort of reaction would be nice. Hmm. Yeah. A negative reaction is always nice. And you, back then, were concerned about the artists seeing what we'd done and, you know, and them kicking up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which might happen. It might still happen. 
but, but we don't mind anymore. Cause no. Past it. <laughs> My job uh, at times was quite easy. I think the Barnet Newman was pretty easy because it's just a big green rectangle. Yeah. And I painted it in a fairly painterly way. Uh, but the Daniel Beren uh, was incredibly difficult. Just the de dis yeah, deciphering the... Uh... That's the word, deciphering. Mm. It was, you know, you could see these strips of colour and it's all very well, you can just paint what you see. But when you're doing something like that, you've got to paint what you see in an intelligent way. I enjoyed doing them all. It was great fun. And we took about a year doing the whole lot, must probably. Have been. Yeah, yeah. Must have been. They were a real challenge. Every one of them had its challenge. Uh, yeah. I mean, get, just briefly going back to the painterly thing, the Barnet Newman is a case in point because the original painting would have been painted with one green yes. out of a tin of paint Yes. over the whole canvas, which is three metres by a metre and a half, something like that. Mm -hmm. Just like painting a wall. It was one flat green yeah. colour, but your interpretation of it is multicoloured mm. because that's how it appears in the environment. The environment, the light changes across the surface of the of the of the flat painting. So and it's an even more so, of that colour. yes, yeah. even more so. And this is something I thought was quite exciting at the time was the Peter Joseph, which was taken in the Liston Gallery with sunlight, sunlight coming, yeah. coming through mm. the skylight. And one of the two paintings has got a splash of sunlight across mm. it, which must have infuriated the gallery owners. Yeah. The paintings were two different colours, uh, but the minute you've got sunlight going across them, you've got millions of different colours. You know, but I loved it. And then the floor and the walls were all different colours because of, uh, of the, the way the light fell across them. Mm. Yeah, I think the short answer is... It has nothing to do with Debussy. I think the long answer is that it has an element of Dada about it. There was something slightly silly about the idea yeah. of a conceptual art piece, which is paintings of photographs, having anything to do with a French Impressionist composer. Uh, yeah. And then when we gave each of the paintings a name based on a Debussy piece that was also done very much tongue in cheek and just in the in the spirit of Dada, in the spirit of silliness. We were just having a bit of fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, that I mean and and, and what's wrong with that? Absolutely.